7, as we always do at 40 past the hour on Wednesdays. We're going to jump over and talk to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Folks, if you have some time available, we got a half day today, close tomorrow. Markets open on Friday, but maybe you're taking a long weekend. Um, you got some time, whether Terry, Teddy's outstanding Forex report, you can check that out under the newsletter tab. You can sign up for $97, come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And don't forget, he's got a couple great webinars out there for $97, capitalizing on time with calendar stock options spreads with Teddy Kegstat and Japanese candlestick pattern stock and options strategies with Teddy. You gain access to the webinar. You get the archive. You can watch as many times as you like. Maybe you get some time over this long holiday weekend. Teddy Kegstat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. So we got some movement in the dollar this morning, man. We got some commodities. We got some jobs numbers this morning. Uh, where do you want to kick things off, Teddy? Well, I think we should start with crude. How about that? I like it. Let's do it. Okay, so, uh, I mean, as you know, uh, yesterday we spiked high in the crude and we uh, came just shy of the upper part of our critical resistance band from the Tiger Forex report. I like the, I like the resistance area where we're at right now. Um, I would be careful uh, if we take out the high from yesterday, that is not a good sign. I think that the high from yesterday, if we come and maybe buffer around that area and fall off of that, that would be a good thing. And uh, pretty much confirm that we're in a range trade for crude from about 85 down to 75 bucks. Uh, if we get above 85 and close above it, that's not a good thing. Uh, that would be very, very bullish. Uh, so uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, right now, I like that it's kind of toppy, if you will. I, you know I will not try and call a top or a bottom. I think it's a good resistance area for it to come back and at least retrace in the short run, you know, um, for a profit-taking move at the very least. If it doesn't, uh, I would say that that would probably signal there's an acceleration of the trend. And when I mean acceleration of the trend, it's a confirmation of uh, a medium and longer-term boost, uh, which fundamentally I don't think is there. But if you hit those levels, that's probably what that means. Yeah, I appreciate the take. And it is remarkable, even on a percentage basis, you know, we're not even I got and I was checking out the charts as you were talking about it. June 4th on my chart, I got a price tag of 72, the handle, and we just hit 84. Right. So you're talking about a $12 run when it was trading at $72 and change, man. That's like a 15% increase in a month in the price yep. of crude. Remarkable. And then I put it on a weekly, Teddy, as you were talking about, just looking at some, some of those price levels. And, you know, we got so used to some of those huge swings, whether it was the Russia invasion of Ukraine, up to 130 and right. change. You had COVID doing bonkers stuff, of course, going to negative prices. Um, mm -hmm. But you go all the way back to October of 2022. You're talking about almost two years and we're between like 70 and 90. We got a few spikes, something like that. Right. But it is interesting that we're kind of in a range of $20, which you right. look at the prior years before that, we had, you know, just craziness on either side. But we're kind of in a little bit of a range. I appreciate the take. And yeah, i looking mm -hmm. at, you know, $85. We were up there earlier in the year, um, pushing some of those levels. But it is interesting. And we've seen those, the prices at the pump. And you talked about the fundamentals. It is interesting. The fundamental nature of it. You talked about, you know, July Fourth of all of all weekends were coming in, a um, mm -hmm. huge driving weekend for the people all across the country, man. And you talked about the fundamentals, and then we look at the technicals. How do you square some of those actions in your own head? You know, and I, you just you you talked about it right then because the fundamentals mm -hmm. might not be lining up, but boy, the technicals look like we're coming into that area. How do you yeah. approach something like that as a trader, really, when, when some of those things are a little bit divergent? I know it's a broad-based question, but you just no, touched on it. No, it's actually it. a very great question, Tommy, and um, it, it's, real, it's really su simplistic. You know, uh, the market is made up of many different participants. You have your speculators, you have your hedgers, and what have you. Um, we're not in a hedging environment. Right now, it's become a very speculative speculative trading becomes very volatile and spiky you know it's when you start to like like you were just saying there's a divergence between fundamentals and technicals when you come into that environment and especially when you're talking about a market like crude or any type of commodity you know i'm a forex guy the nice thing about fx is you're liquid you know basically almost seven days a week you know except for you know, Friday afternoon into Sunday afternoon, you know, for 48 hours, that's the only time you're closed, you know? So there's a dynamic with commodities because when you have expirations of futures, expirations of options, 
And especially in this kind of environment where you have technicals and fundamentals diverging, it gives a lot of opportunities for traders and bigger, bigger money interests. You know, so that can cause a lot of swings that you're not going to normally have in a you, 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 when the market is liquid and normal, even if it's chaotic because of news, it's stable. You know, you, you you may have big rallies, you may have big breaks, but it's it still has enough volume at at every price level to to absorb whatever dynamic you have going on during the day. Now we're coming into a period where you're going to have va- vacuum pockets. You know, where you're literally going to have concentrations of volume at so much so such a divergence of levels that you're going to cause these vacuum spikes they're going to run the deck and all your weak shorts and longs depending on the move are probably going to get squeezed out so i would be very careful you know right now you can like you said since the beginning of june i mean we're we're now we ended the second quarter we're halfway through the summer and we've been rallying crude for a month you know so the question is at the very least is there going to be a corrective pullback a profit taking move or is this trend really that strong you know and then it's a matter of once it, like you said technicals and fundamentals are diverging what's driving this is speculative action is driving this market right now and that's kind of scary when you get to that point because you have to if like right now if you're long i'd be very cautious about your stops i would i wouldn't raise them too tight but i would definitely be cautious with them you know as far as having your rational expectations to the upside if you're not in the trade right now i'd be very careful on a daily basis you know like we spiked high yesterday in crude we're coming back a little bit today going into a holiday market you got to remember it's a holiday market week we're going to be closed we're going to come back friday like let's say that today you know we're going to close soon crude's probably not going to have much action after another hour from now let's just be real you know we're closing down blah 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 let's say friday the market sinks just a little bit okay i I could see then if monday we open up and see a big rally and especially if we come close to the high of uh you know yesterday you're probably going to see crude go up to 87 to 90 dollars next week you know so and and that's not because of fundamentals it's not because of anything in the news. It's not because of anything like that. It's purely speculative, ex- irrational exuberance, I guess, is what you want to say about it. It's, it's the market right now is just pumping up. The bid is on crude right now. You know, there's no reason to sell except for profit taken. And even that's really skittish. You know, so that's the kind of market we're looking at right now. You know, like. I have to say, like, you know, the currencies, you know, <laughs> there's action in crude, <clears throat> you know, as far as the dollar index and currencies and interest rates. We know that there's, they're pretty much they're in a range trade. Crude has been in a range trade, but maybe we're pushing the bounds for a breakout to the upside. That was great information, man. A great lesson um, as a trader. And if you got a few minutes, can we come back and talk? Maybe some Absolutely. of those. Uh, I want to take a look at the yen if we can and maybe the dollar great. index as well. Stay tuned, folks. Absolutely. We'll be right back. Cool. Welcome back, folks. S&P is positive by one. We're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstad. So, Teddy, maybe if we can kick it off with the dollar, just because, you know, we got some private payroll numbers today. We had Chairman Powell out there yesterday. So we got the 10-year sitting at 4.4% right now. The idea being in the market, at least, that maybe we are having a little bit of weakening. weakening. Chairman Powell used, I think, the word disinflationary forces. Maybe we get a cut. And you got the dollar a little bit weak at 105.34. That's putting a bid in gold up like 35 bucks this morning. What do you think about the action in the dollar index right now, 105.34? Uh, you know what? We actually took uh, ahead of today is the day where we're actually sliding pretty hard in dollar index. It's holiday markets. Once again, I'd be very careful about what kind of market action you have over today. You know, in a, on a shortened uh, time frame, and then Friday and before in front of a weekend. Uh, so, <clears throat> I mean, yields right now, we had a, we had a spike low in yields uh, two days ago. Now they're p- coming back. I think that's one of the reasons why you're seeing the dollar index fall apart today. It's also yeah. thin volume. I think that's another reason on, on why that's happening. You know, sure. um, when it comes to the U.S. dollar yen, I mean, because that's talking about yeah. divergence. You know, like you, you got other current, the dollar index is falling down, but the U.S. dollar yen is railing. Why is that happening? Yeah. Well. I think it's probably because oil is up and yields are and uh, okay. yields are falling down, you know. So and then when you have that and, and with you know between the commodity aspect, that's giving strength to that and the yields, but it's acting in the opposite with all the other currency crosses, you know. Yeah. So that's, and that's why the dollar index. Did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So 
and and right now we're laying on you know from the Tiger Forex report where we had the critical bearish retracement band, which was for the correction from the high that we had from last week. We're laying on the bottom of that band. I like that as far as support. Can we get below it? Absolutely. Can we close below it and be around there on Friday? Yeah, but I'd be careful because you're looking at a corrective profit-taking move. You know, um, there's no fundamental reason to say that the dollar is going to crash right now. You know, I mean, even just because you're talking about a two-day bounce in yields, that doesn't mean that the that the yields are going to start to go down. You know, as far as this quarter cut, I think that there might juice the election to help Biden. That's where this is coming from. They're giving a precursor to maybe in September cut the rate a quarter point, and it's just to address the election. Outside of that. It goes against we'll see narrative. if they're going to help him. We see if he's even going to be around by November on that ticket. We'll see. Teddy, thank you yeah. so much, man.